Do you have advice specifically for teachers who are like experts in other subject areas who want to also engage with or incorporate computer science in particular? Yeah, I think one is to, if they have a computer science teacher or colleague to buddy up, that's always a good plan. And if not, I think there are increasingly programs that will start to give teachers these interdisciplinary ways of thinking about computing. But I think, you know, not so many are as focused in that formal education. I think what's missing and what makes it difficult to give advice is how do you tell a teacher who has 24 mandates in six other subject areas how to get started with a seventh subject area? And so getting started might have to be what are you already teaching and how can you layer and infuse computing within that? So you're teaching about the election. Let's talk about modeling. You're teaching about social studies. Let's talk about archival processes and different forms of media. And there's lots of ways in. Frankly, maybe this is my bias as a teacher educator. We're not going to be able to give PD to all existing in-service K-12 teachers. And if we do a little five minutes for everybody, it means nobody for everybody. So I hope that pre-service teacher education departments like my own are really taking this seriously and thinking about how are we preparing and infusing this throughout all of our courses? How is this computing education replacing the old ed tech you know, they don't need to learn how to use smart boards. They're beyond that. We can do other things. And I think that's really the place where we're going to be able to start exploring ideas because the cohort of math educators are learning and talking about math together. And they're also getting a little computing. And the science educators are talking about science together and thinking about computing. And the way we've set up education in the United States, once they go out to schools, most schools, districts provide little if if any, professional development. So this is the place where a lot of those professional conversations and dispositions are being seeded. And it's not too late. Obviously, growth mindset teachers are lifelong learners, but it's a much easier investment, if you will, to think about infusing this knowledge within this new cohort of teacher who are going to go out to the schools each year. But that's a very slow process in terms of educational reform. It's a hard nut to crack because I don't know how else we do it without a lot of one-offs. And if we look at the history of education in the United States, the one-offs will always benefit the privileged. So we do it systemically. We're going to grow computer science and we are going to maintain the achievement gap or education debt, to borrow from Dr. Gloria Ladson Billings. Is that a success if we're growing, you know, computer science for all, but we look at the numbers and we've grown computer science and we've either maintained or perhaps even widened or perhaps stratified the digital inequities in computing. So that's what keeps me up at night, that how do we recommend and grow computer science without it being the schools that serve the most privilege reaping the most benefits? This excerpt of the CSK8 podcast is from episode number 67, which is titled Exploring Computer Science with Joanna Good.